Hello friends, family, froggers and followers and welcome to my latest video. This one brought to you by Pete's Recording Audio Techniques. So you've got a very strong clue there what this one is about already. As those of you who have followed my previous blockbusting videos will know, I'm a bit of a dab hand at the ivories, and the ebonese for that matter. That is, I compose and record music in my own little studio, on my keyboard. As a bit of history, I've been doing this since I was in my teens with a family piano and my first cassette tape recorder. I progressed to a four-track cassette machine with a proper mixer that introduced me to multi-tracking that's layering each instrument on top of the others to build up a composition. Then computers arrived. First a Commodore C64, then an Amiga, then a CX-5 Yamaha. But I'm getting lost in nostalgia now. I'm probably boring those disgusting pants off you. So I'll whiz through to today. I now use an Apple MacBook running Logic Pro X. That's pro for professional. And I am a professional, as much that I earn money from my wares. Those that have seen my previous music review videos will have seen how much I've made from my previous album releases, which at last count was 59p. But I'm happy to report this has now increased to 61p. Whoop whoop. Using extrapolation, big word for today, I've calculated that I'll be a millionaire in 12,500,000 years time. Not taking inflation into account, I'll have you note. So please keep tuning in to my music and all the usual streaming services. Just search for 58 Frogs. That's me. And you'll help me reach my dreams. Anyway, down to business. I started off saying I'd show you how I produce such masterpieces. So let's set up the studio and see how magic is made. And here it is. You may be a little underwhelmed at the size of my equipment, though my good lady wife has never complained, mainly because it doesn't take much room in this format. I do have different setups though, with different keyboards and screens, etc. But for ease today, I'm keeping it simple. And because my dinner's nearly ready and I need to clear up all this mess soon. And here is the heart of it all. Logic Pro X. Such an amazing program, though I cut my teeth on GarageBand first for a good few years, which considering it's free on Apple Macs as well as iPhones and iPads, has a truly incredible amount of functionality. And it's incredibly intuitive too. It would have to be to get an old Muppet like me to learn how to use it. The upgrade to Logic was really easy, as it's very similar in so many ways. So, Let's start with a track from my second album, Monosonic. A simple piece with a monstrous beat and a big sound, despite only having eight parts within it. Worked it all out yet? These are all the tracks with different instruments playing, from bass, drums, guitars and various synthesizer tracks. When I sit down to write some music, I usually start by picking an instrument or a patch from the hundreds that come as standard with Logic. In this case, I wanted to produce a rocky type track with a distorted guitar. Although I'd love to say I played this part on one of my many axes on the wall, sadly there are more ornaments than instruments these days, and the guitar part on this track was actually played on my keyboard. So I went to Legacy Instruments, Logic, Guitars, Electric Guitars, and found this festival lead patch that I really liked. Crunchy, edgy, with a pinch of reverb. Perfect. Next, I wanted fast-paced, loud drums to go with it. Now, the drumming is the only part of my music that I usually cheat with, as I don't play the skins myself. Fortunately, Logic and GarageBand have a really brilliant system for selecting very professional sounding drum tracks. You just need to select the genre, in this case rock of course. Choose from one of the many different drummers. I've used Max the Punk for this track. 
should have been named after the legendary Pete the Punk. You can then choose from multiple different drum kits, each with their own feel and sound. Finally, you can select one of a handful of variations for each part of the track – intro, verse, chorus, etc. You can also choose an almost infinite number of fills to make the section more or less complex, or change the way the bass and snare drums on a hi-hat play. For this track, I've extracted the snare drum into a separate track so I can add reverb and make it stand out a little better. It also adds a little bit of phasing, which I quite like. So, although it's not me playing the drums, there's actually quite a lot of control I have over how the drums are played and how they sound. After that, it's just a case of adding more tracks for the bass and solo lead parts, and any backing sounds to add atmosphere or richness to the overall sound. These are all recorded one at a time though I can go in afterwards and correct my bum notes or timings. Not that I create many bum notes or timing errors. In this piano roll. I can also change the sound of each synthesizer type track with several adjustable parameters, just as you would if you had an expensive synthesizer with lots of knobs. Like I said earlier, the capability of this software is virtually limitless and brings to my fingertips a humongous range of sounds that I couldn't even have dreamed of back in my Commodore days. And it all comes from this beautiful tiny little laptop. Mind blowing. The final part once you've laid down all the tracks is to master the entire piece. Now, I'm certainly no master at mastering. It's a dark art in my mind, but basically I mix each of the tracks in terms of loudness and pan, that's left or right in the stereo space, to ensure every instrument sits in its right place. I then add EQ to cut out or boost any frequencies that are too loud or too soft. I can also choose from a whole multitude of effects – chorus, flange, reverb, echo, distortion, compression, etc. – for each track or across all of them. Don't ask me what all these buses are about. I only know of the number 8, which takes us into town when we're out for a few beers. All I know is if it sounds good to me, then that's good enough. A professional producer could probably do a lot more with my recordings, but what matters to me is that I've done all this myself, and I'm bloody proud of what I achieved with all this. Hopefully this has given you a bit of an insight into how much work goes into writing and recording my music. From start to finish a complete track could take a few hours to a couple of days maybe. I find if I don't manage to complete something in that amount of time, I lose interest and start over again with, from scratch with another idea. I hope too that others finding this video on YouTube while searching for an introduction to Logic or GarageBand will find it useful in getting them started. There are hundreds of other people out there doing a far more professional job of this than me of course. Overall, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you stuck it through to the end, then well done. I appreciate this hasn't been as cheesy or as tongue-in-cheek as my previous videos, but everyone has serious moments, as well as silly ones. That just leaves me to say... Keep frogging!